Hey guys, it's Chairman here. The last weekend was Bushiroad Spring Fest in California. Uh, and on top of judging at that event and going to a wedding, I also played in two local tournaments in the area and placed second and fourth respectively. So I'll be doing deck profiles on the two decks that I've been, I, I took these tournaments. They just happen to be the two decks I've been testing a lot during this time. And so I was going to do a deck profile on them sooner or later. And you know, these results give me pretty good confidence that these lists are at a good point to do a deck profile on. So yeah, um, let's start with the first deck, which is going to be Assault Lily. This is the deck I played at Playlife Fullerton on Monday. And I have made a few changes since Monday, just based on uh, how that tournament panned out. Let's just get straight into the deck profile. Starting off, we're playing four copies of the Double Rare Runner, the uh, Yu Yu Riri Runner from set one. I had been testing Fumi Runner up to this point, and I was so sure that Fumi Runner was the better runner. But unfortunately, there's just a few things that make Fumi Runner not so good. I'm going to spend a little time talking about it. So first thing is, so I thought Fumi Runner was better because it's bigger on your opponent's turn. It's also a level 1, which means that your opponent either has to crash into it or side, which is a huge tempo loss for your opponent usually. And the fact that it's small is mitigated by the fact that we run this package where we can resonate, resonate for 2k power if you have these specific cards in your hand. The problem is that you need these two specific cards in your hand plus the runner. So that's three specific cards at level zero, which is not very common. So oftentimes uh, you won't be able to have this. And also if you open the three two without the zero zero in opening hand, you usually ditch this because it's just a useless card. You don't usually keep it. Usually what happens is your Fumi is actually just 2K on attack and you're not gonna kill anything, which really sucks. The second thing that I've noticed is that a lot of decks nowadays run 3-5 runners in some kind of back row to pump power. So what will happen is I'll open Fumi Runner, my opponent will play a 3-5 across from it, maybe pump power or maybe not, it doesn't really matter. They'll kill my Fumi Runner and then on my turn I have to deal with a 3-5. Except maybe I don't have these two and then I don't have anything to actually kill it, which is really annoying. So yeah, um, I actually thought that this was not a bad situation like in theory because you want level 0 to be taken pretty slowly so the fact that kind of by doing this you force them to only attack once was good for you maybe on the following turn you can like rekey into like some more cards except again the problem is that you're rekeying for attackers but these attackers are small you're not actually being able to trade into this so um, what the 3k runner does is just gives us more power um, offensively defensively and also is a more guaranteed plus because our, our, your opponent can't just like play one card and then um, just keep it alive they might try field on you which is kind of kind of unfortunate but you know, I, I just think it's better to have the consistency um, that the 3k runner gives instead of like the highs and lows that Fumi runner is. So yeah, we're on the new, or we're on the old runner instead of the new Fumi runner. Alright, next we are playing four copies of the Kanaho Riki. I'm not actually playing the Shenlin Clock Bomb Riki for a few reasons. Uh, number one is that this Riki is just better in this deck because Yuja is not a selective combo, so we do need selectivity at level zero. And then the second thing is I'm not really playing the full level down package anymore um, because I think there's just better cards now to play. And so without the level down package, I think the Shenlin Riki isn't nearly as good. Uh, there's just a combination of like low selectivity and no level down package. Yeah, I think the Kanaho Riki is really good and instead, uh, and I don't think you need any more. The drop draw effect is also really powerful, helps us get into our climaxes because that's like the most important thing uh, that we can do in this deck. Alright, so we are playing three copies of the back row, Double Resonance Kanaho. Uh, so this is one of the big payoffs to playing the choice endgame, is the ability to have this resonance package. Um, and this is one of the reasons why we don't need the Shinden Riki, because instead of paying one, clocking ourselves in like RNG off the top two, we can just pay one, rest this, and look at the top three. Uh, we get one less card, but it gives us more selectivity, gives us more mill. And also this resonances for power, which is pretty good, uh, allows our level zeros to beat over stuff, allows our level ones to just continue to apply pressure. I just think it's a really good card, especially in conjunction with the uh, Salvage Brainstorm. So uh, again, we're still on the Salvage Brainstorm. I think this card is really important. And just the combination of these two back rows is actually crazy because at the start of your main phase, you can look at the top card of your deck. If it's a climax, you brainstorm. If it's a card you want, or if it's not a climax, then you you know where you're actually, you know at least one card that you're going to reveal off of the... Um, the Kanaho top check three. So it just gives you so much information, uh, really helps you kind of make the best play given any turn. And so, yeah, and obviously we do need the brainstorm for the top check confirm on the Yuja combo. I think this back row is pretty set. I would not 
have it any other way. We are playing two copies of the Mai Fukajiro. So on death, discard a card, look at top four, add a level one or higher. This used to be two copies of Spawn Riki. I took it out because I, we didn't need extra Riki effects anymore and we just needed more mill. So yeah, this card is really good. After moving, uh, bumping this card from zero to two, it really solved the decks, like deck speed issues. It's not too difficult to find it. Uh, if you want to prioritize it, you can Riki for it. Otherwise, your top check threes or brainstorms usually get you there. We are playing one copy of the Kureha double bond. I think this is just a, a really good one of in this deck because it's double bond and so it's like two discard outlets and one card. If you like somehow like tr like trigger too many climaxes, you have like a bunch of um, gold bars in your hand. It's just like a really easy way to, to dish them all out. And then you don't have to do both. You can just do one or the other. It just gives you the missing piece that you, you don't have. So it's all, it's just a fantastic one of card, I think. And then of course, climax swap, top check two, amazing card. All right, uh, level one, not nothing too special here. Four copies of one zero Yuja. Uh, we're not playing the full level down package. So this is just mostly going to be sniping level zeros. We don't really have ways to kill like level ones and twos that consistently. Um, so again, we're just trying to get advantage by forcing our opponent to not be able to have brainstorm or to uh, like play brainstorm sparingly. And we're almost never full comboing. Like we're never dropping three. It's either a one or two. And then we're trying to space out our gold bars so that we can continue to like apply pressure. So like we kill a brainstorm, they play another one, we kill another one. And to complement that, we are playing three copies of the one zero Tazusa. And this is basically our pseudo climax combo because uh, when you play climax, it gets on reverse blind stock. So the combination of Tazusa and the Yuja, basically it's like we're playing seven level one climax combos and uh, we basically supplement the Yuja's with the Tazusa so that we can continue to get advantage. And again, with the stock, stock is super good in this deck because we can turn into a top check three, like a good quality brainstorm. So this this level one setup is really, really strong. I actually think I might want to try to bump Tazusa up to four and see if we can cut anything else for it. Um, I just think that with this new setup, we don't have to get once again, go all in on the level down setup because even if our opponent tries to deny our, our pops by just only fielding front row, we can still get really good advantage. Level two, we are playing one copy of the Yuja bomb. I mean, this bomb just cracked. <laughs> you always play one. Uh, we are on two copies of refresh counter. This used to be one copy of refresh counter and one copy of the 3-2 Kureha. Except in like all my games of playing, I like never played the Kuraha or used her ability. But somehow in those same exact number of games, I lost three of them at least because I either triggered the refresh counter or it was in clock and I couldn't salvage it. So it's like, it's crazy. So I'm bumping it up to two. I think uh, this is just way better. Um, in the current meta just, or just with this deck, this game plan, you don't really need that much stock at level three. It's only six stocks. So any extra stock, just put it to the refresh counter. Don't die. That's pretty good. Uh, I think if somehow like a super, like a crazy meta contending deck had like a crazy event at level three, uh, you could play this again. It's actually kind of funny because like you can play this against Superstar or the, the old version of Superstar and you can stop them from using their events on their final turn. But Superstar is dead. So this card basically has no use. So two copies of Refresh Counter. Refresh Counter is an amazing card. And we are playing two copies of the 2-1 event. Now this is kind of interesting. I, I know some people have like cut this or have been like, hey, Chairman, why are you still playing the 2-1 event? It's not that good. Um, I actually think it's really good because once again, the Yuja is not a selective combo. So we really need a lot of selectivity. And the fact that the Yuja can add the event and the event is just salvage anything kind of gets us there. Uh, second thing is um, sometimes some decks run level one back rows and um, having the option to access the event to pop a level one back row. It's pretty nice. I, I still think it's pretty valuable. And the last thing is again, like this deck uses so little stock in the late game that if you just have the event, it becomes any card in your waiting room. And so like you can full combo off even if you're like missing a piece or something like that. And so, yeah, I think just getting extra like on-demand salvage uh, is really good. And the fact that the on-demand salvage, again, is not a miss for our level one climax combo, I think that's the most important part. So yeah, we're playing three events. You could, we could potentially drop this down to like either one or zero. I think if we drop it down to one, we'd play an extra copy of Tazosa. I think that's perfectly fine. It might be something I would test in the future. Um, two events just so that we can maybe consistently see it. Um, like at least like like it'll peak its head. I think if we run only one event, it's it's just too rare. Like we'd have to like hold it. I don't know from like level zero in order for it to ever see use. So I think two. I think this is fine for now. 
Uh, level 3 is playing 3 Tazusa early play. This card's amazing. I don't think I need to explain. Goodness, this card's so good. Especially now that we can pump it 2k with the red mids. It's like we don't even miss the back row. It's kind of crazy. Um, 4 copies each of the level 3s. This endgame combo is absolutely cracked. 6 stock, 6 instances of damage, 332. It costs your entire hand, but like, that's not a really big issue. And in this deck, it's, it's actually really good because like, our hand quality at level 3 is, is absolutely garbage. Like, it's just gonna be a bunch of like, useless cards, and then this just turns all those useless cards into like, just a game winning push. I did not like the A choice deck, but I think, after talking to some people, thanks Jobby, uh, about other decks with the choice top end, I realized that. I think bar choice is just insane because the top end is so cheap and so consistent that you should just spend the rest of your game doing something that's like meaningful. And I think bar is just the most meaningful thing you can do up to level three. You're just like making your opponent's life miserable. This deck has a lot of like, it's already really self-sufficient. It doesn't really need any more help kind of like staying alive. So like the fact that you can use Yuja to force your opponent into a bad situation, I think is what makes this deck really, really powerful. It also just gold bar choice is, is such a good climax spread. Level one gold bar, level three choice. It just feels so good. And lastly, we're playing one copy of 3-2 uh, Fumi. Um, you know, stock swap on demand. Also, doesn't add any extra stock cost to our finishing combo. So again, for six stock, you can go Fumi, uh, double Kanaho, and then at six stock, you know, still full combo. The fact that we don't use any stock at the late game means that the stock swap and stuff like that is really easy to turn online. And then climax spread, of course, four gold bar, four choice. I am getting the foil of the gold bar. Um, the art looks amazing and we will try to foil uh, more of this deck as we get it. I just want to like get the good arts anyways. But yeah, so this deck is pretty solid. I'm honestly really happy with where it is. I think maybe an extra Tazusa somehow uh, would be the only change I'd make. Otherwise, yeah, this deck feels really good. It's really consistent, really strong. Even if your opponent knows how to play against it, because of our Tazusa level 1 engine now, like it doesn't even matter. Like we're still going to get our advantage. Uh, Tazusa with the back row resonance means that we're still going to keep our hands topped off. Um, you know, we're still going to be able to beat over our opponent's cards with Tazusa plus the 2k boost of the resonance. It swings for 8k, 9k with a climax that basically kills any level, anything at level 1. And then once we hit level 2, the 3-2 Tazusa just kills anything. Period. Yeah, so um, it's just a really consistent deck, really fun to play. And then you go into finishing turn and just, just destroy them. So yeah, this deck did really well at play live. Um, I think the only game I lost was because uh, I was three climaxes in 10 and I took six off the top. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think this deck's really strong. Hope you guys have a chance to try it. And this will be my last Assault Lily deck profile until they get new support, I suppose. Stay tuned for the next deck. Yeah, you can see what other deck I played uh, over this past weekend.